Hello. We are here in Kansas City, Missouri, Hi. about two and a half hours away from your hometown there in Eldon, Missouri. Well, say hello to my sister. She lives in Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> we absolutely will. We also do a little sports. We cover the Missouri Tigers. You're a big football fan. A little rough season there for the Tigers, though. And a graduate of the University of Missouri. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> That's a small world. The Tigers, you're <laughs> no kidding. That's awesome. Now, yeah. Are you from Missouri originally? No. Yeah, we, we, we are, yeah. We live here and Love we, guys. yeah, yep, we do. And we do this, do our a sports show from here too. We cover Missouri on a daily basis. We cover the SEC football, fully credentialed members of the media. So we got, unfortunately got to see a lot of Mizzou games in person this year. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it gets better from here, George. <laughs> well, they had a pretty good year the year before, right? Yeah, yeah. The Drew Locke, now he's in the NFL with the Broncos. It's just crazy right. kind of going through bio and, and seeing that you're, you're from Eldon. I know i I go down there all the time too, down to the Lake of the Ozarks. So I'm I, small world. I spent my whole well, I didn't spend all my childhood because my father worked for the Rock Island Railroad. You know, Eldon was the uh, the crew transfer place for the Rock Island between St. Louis and Kansas City. Yeah. So, uh, it, but he also ended up being a train master, and I went to like eight different junior highs and. Uh, Oklahoma, Illinois, Iowa, wow. and Missouri. I, I I think I'm leaving a, a state out there. <laughs> but, <laughs> it was it was pretty crazy. Well, George, yeah, but I the mean, Lake of the Ozarks is my favorite spot. Yeah, yeah, it you is. Get a lot it's of cool press see. these days. Yeah, right. It's, it, it, because of the the show, Ozark de definitely helps out. And but, Bill oh, Guy's just... book. Have you? Oh no! Did you read Bill Guy's book? Oh yeah, he you know the, he's a CBS newsman. I believe he was CBS. Yeah, and and um, he he wrote he he had a job as at at, at a place at at the lake that I worked at as it, it's no longer in existence. It was torn down. It was a beautiful old spot, and he he worked there. Uh, you know, wow. bell bell hopping and <laughs> mowing lawns and all that kind of stuff, which is what <laughs> I did. And it's a book. It's very funny. He's got a great. That's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Um, great. I recommend it highly. Find it. <laughs> I'm such a fan of that part of the part of the state and stuff. And and there's so much history there and things that have gone on. It's like, uh, you know, just kind of a it's a it's a summer getaway. It's a it's got a lot of history. It's really cool. Um. So for for George, when we get started here, I mean, kind of just take us through. You know, you talked about you know growing up and in, in a lot of different places and moving around a lot. I mean, so you finally get into acting and you, you start on general hospitals, your very first television appearance, uh, as I'm reading here, just talk about that, how you kind of got I was into on it. Stuff before that, I think I was under contract at days of our lives before I was on. on oh, 1979. Yeah. What, or, uh, I, what, I, what? I did them all. I've done a lot of them now. I started on days of our lives. Then I went to, to, uh, young and the restless for, I wasn't under contract to any of these others after days. And then mm -hmm. I went to, to General Hospital where I thought I was going to have a thing. And then one day I got a script arrived at the door saying, uh, Mr. Niven, your services will no longer be required. And I go, <laughs> oh, I called my agent. And I think I just got fired. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I, I also did uh, One Life to Live and, and uh, All My Children in New York. Yeah, absolutely. And a couple early shows in the 70s that you were on, I wanted to touch on here. Uh, you were on Barnaby Jones with the great Buddy Epson, and uh, of course, Hollywood oh, yeah, Tonight yeah. with Martin Mull and Fred Willard. I just wanted to get your thoughts and experiences that on working with those three great actors in those two shows. Well, I did, Barnaby Jones. I don't. I can't remember actually working with Buddy. I, I have a very dim memory of that. It, I was also doing a play at the same time, and I and I only worked a couple of days on it. I, I don't remember that very well. I was I was a bad guy. I I played a lot of bad guys on TV. <laughs> and uh, um, <laughs> and what was the other one? Uh, Fernwood did, did Tonight with Martin Mole and Fred Willard. Oh, Fernwood Tonight. That was a gas. That was that that was really fun. I I, I had done I had done something for. Oh, I I had gone in an audition and I got into. Uh, into um spinal tap with the casting director and and i when i went to spinal to audition for her initially 
I did this whole um, country hillbilly guy from from the Ozarks. It was a character <laughs> I used to do in, in improv, and um, and she said, "Oh, that's great." So she sent me into Spinal Tap, and and I did it. I did it for them, and they said that's really funny. But but uh, and and I did it in Spinal Tap. But but when I went to Fernwood tonight, and we were rehearsing the scene, Martin Mull said to the to the producer said I, I think that the the hillbilly thing is too much of a cheap shot and i i don't want him to do it so really <laughs> the, that part was not so much fun but it was fun just being on the show because those guys were so terrific especially for Ed willard i loved him oh he's great uh so george um this is final tap is um and I'm not kidding when I say this. One of my one of my favorite movies of all time, Rob Reiner, oh, uh, just a hilarious movie. Christopher Guest and um, um, Harry Shearer, those guys are just insane. It's so, the 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 humor was so ahead of its time. Yeah, the humor was so ahead of its time because a lot of the bands that they were parodying hadn't actually done yet what they wound up doing. Which, <laughs> they weren't in the national eye yet. Yeah. Those what, guys what were so that? hip. They were. Yeah. What What was it like? Well, I went in and I went in and did the accent for them, and you know, we get just at a meeting, and and they said, "Oh, that's great. You got to do that for the for the thing." So, and I did, and and they put me together with a, uh, an actor named J.J. J. Barry, who was a he was a, a regular on one of the Paramount comedies. I can't remember which one it was, and and. Uh, but a real New Yorker kind of guy, you know, and, and I and I'm doing that kind of talk, you know, <laughs> and it it was it was it was a, a, a lot of <laughs> a lot of fun, but it, it was and and then Rob Reiner finished. I worked a couple of days on it when the big meeting in, in the when the, when they're releasing the album and and and, I, and then the next day I had another scene with with JJ that didn't make it into the final cut because we had it with our scripts were like, Oh, maybe a, f a fingernail depth lit <laughs> size. It, it may, there may have been 10 pages. They were all just paragraphs about what happens in this scene. And we made it all up <laughs> it was pretty spectacular. <laughs> and, and Rob said to me after he said, he said, you know, I had no idea who you, who you were, and 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 when when you came in, and they just said, oh, he's going to be fine. And he said, and he, he said, you know, they were right. You really did a good job. <laughs> it, it was a great experience. And and what what was the lovely lady uh, who did did that scene? Uh, Fran Dresser uh, who was in charge. Uh, from, yeah, friend friend. I would run into her at auditions, and I, and she said, "Oh, you know that there's a there's a screening next week." And I said, "Oh, I, I I'm not sure I can go because I'm working in a show, and and, and I, I didn't end up not going." And then I saw the movie, and I'm not in it nearly as much. Right. The whole thing with JJ, <laughs> was, the whole thing with JJ was yeah. Bad, but I, I'm that's one of the, my proudest moments, and one of the things that along with being on Saved by the Bell gets the most reaction when people look at my, my resume and they go, I, I mean, and in big time directors, movie directors, they go, oh, you can say by the Bell? Wow. <laughs> and I go, wow. <laughs> and they say, yeah, I never missed one. I watch it every day. And, and it's, it's that way. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I love hearing that. And uh, when doing research, uh, when we got a hold of you and you said you do the interview, something that kind of lit up for me and got me excited was to see that you were in Little House on the Prairie back in 1981. One of my all-time favorite actors is Michael Landon. So I just had to get your experiences and thoughts on working with the great Michael Landon and being on that show. Well, I just... <laughs> I'm so, uh... <laughs> Just remembering Michael got me a little choked up there for a minute because he was he was an absolutely wonderful human being, and and, and he directed the shows that, that the two that I did. Yeah, and uh, and the crew loved him, and I would talk to members of the crew, and they say, you know, we love Michael because we never have to pay to work overtime but he pays all of us over minimum so we don't care whether we're working overtime or not <laughs> exactly, we yeah. just love doing things for him 
And and it was that way on the set too. And I was just leaving Days of Our Lives uh, and going, oh God, now what am I going to do? And, they, and and Michael, I guess, had seen me on it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And, and he said, I'm just so glad to have you on the show. I think you're going to be great in this part. And and it was it was a, a wonderful role and a, a nice a nice time as well. We shot up in the Sierras for some of it. Well, we are, of course, building up to to say by the bell, but we're not quite there yet, George, because you were um, in another movie that uh, <laughs> Noah and I are huge fans of, and that's Lionheart. So you've kind of run the gambit here from <laughs> from daytime dramas to Little House on the Prairie to martial arts with Jean-Claude Van Damme, Lionheart, 1990. Uh, you yep. played an a announcer, uh, a fight announcer. What? Just talk about that. I mean, uh, it's that's another movie that still comes up. I mean, uh, Jean Claude Van Damme was so popular and so hot at that time. No, nope. it had to be cool. I wasn't a, part of a that. Fight, fight announcer. I wasn't a fight announcer. I was his commander in the Foreign Legion. I'm at the, the French very Foreign beginning. Legion. Yes. Yeah, and there's no, there's no way a, a Belgian guy would have been in the Foreign Legion. But uh, you know, that's that's, <laughs> that's quibbling. Stretch of the imagination there, yeah. <laughs> nitpicking, yeah. nitpicking. <laughs> well, I, I swear, you know, I, I, I do a lot of a, a lot of theater too, and I, I was doing a show down in La Jolla, and this was like, this was maybe three, four years ago. I, we were doing um, uh, His Girl Friday, uh, a readaptation of the of the movie by A. R. Gurney, the playwright, and this guy was sitting next to me. And he was, young latino guy and he said i was just looking over your resume oh my god you are in <laughs> you're in uh, lionheart I went, yeah he said, oh what was he like and, it, and everyone in the movie was was somebody who was very big in martial arts like they just offered to be in the film every half the cast was 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 people from from that pursuit billy and, blanks comes to mind and, uh, exactly billy blanks was was in in my scenes there yeah. in, in the foreign legion <laughs> and then the rest of the movie too absolutely uh, was, and, uh, he, yeah go ahead john claude could he could be a challenging person <laughs> he he uh he was at the height of his his thing and he he was convinced that I looked like Rutger Hauer. So he, that's one of the reasons why he voted for me to be in the movie. Hey, whatever works. We had nice, we had nice scenes together though. They were, they were, you know, face to face, tough guys things. Oh yeah. Very intense. It it worked definitely for sure. We love that part. Uh, And uh, three other things I got to ask you about uh, here real quick, just working with, uh, William Shatner on TJ Hooker, John Ritter on Three's Company, that had to be great, and then Larry Hagman in Dallas. I mean, just iconic shows and great actors. Well, definitely. Less with Larry Hagman, because he, I did Dallas, but my scenes weren't with him. Uh, it, uh, but Patrick uh, directed that episode that I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, um I'm thinking, of, uh, who did you mention before? Uh, John Ritter and Three's who? Company and uh, William oh, well, Shatner John and was a Hooker. Doll. Yeah. John, John every, I did that show early on in my TV pursuits. And I would run into John on the street and he'd run up and say, hey, how you doing? It's great to see you. He was just that kind of person. He was a lovely, lovely human being. I was so, um, so moved when he when we lost him so early yeah. because he was also a great talent. And, um, and who was the other? <laughs> uh, William Shatner I go, and T.J. Hooker. Oh, I, did, I did two T.J. Hookers with Bill. He, he directed the second one. The first one, was, I was the Bigfoot rapist. <laughs> is that okay for the podcast? That's, that's quite a role there that you, <laughs> you snagged. <laughs> I had to have a foot double. I'm sorry to say, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it that was that was that was actually one of the first big nighttime shows I did with that first one. Uh, I, I had I, I doubled on a couple of shows, T.J. Hooker and Dukes of Hazard, but I did one with the new Dukes, 
and another with the regular Dukes. Mm -hmm. I, I had I had known Tom Wopat since he was in college. He was in a a friend of mine was running the Madison Civic Repertory, and I went out there and did the Rain Man at, at, at Madison Civic, and and Tom played the the young son in it and practically stole the show, which you know. It was fine because we became good friends. But you know, I'm I'm the guest artist here. What are you doing? You're wiping me off the stage. And, and we've remained friends since, actually. Oh. We both started out at a at a theater in in uh, Michigan called the Barn Theater, which is it turned out a number of fabulous performers. Uh, among them, Marin Maisie and Tom, and and many more actually. Well, George, in, in 1991, it uh, finally happens. You um, are on two episodes of Saved by the Bell, uh, Palm Springs Weekend One and Two. You play the part of David Spano. Just talk about how this kind of came to be. Uh, we've had Peter Engel on our show before. You know, obviously uh, the buck kind of stops with, with Peter when it comes to uh, the, the Save by the Bell show. He's the creator of the show. Just kind of talk about how it came to be uh, and, and sort of how, how it all happened. I had to make use of, uh, I went in an audition for it and they were, they were very responsive and, and Peter and, and the other producers and, and I thought, well, you know, that, that looks good. And then I hadn't heard anything. And I called my agent and, and they said, well, I just talked to him. And they, they said, they really like you, but they're a little unsure. And I said, oh, okay. And uh, so I, I had my, another good friend that had done a um, uh, show with down in La Jolla, Ernie Sabella. We, we'd, we'd done um, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum together. And Ernie actually did seven episodes of of Saved by the Bell. And and I I called him up and I said, Ernie, how do you, do you know anybody over there? Do you know Peter Engel? You know those guys? He said, yeah, sure, sure. Because he'd done the Hawaiian episodes right before oh, they were yes. shooting mine. And and I, I said, well, you know, if you if you get a chance to talk to him, just throw me a good word because they're they seem to be a little on the fence. And, he called me back about five minutes later and he said, everything's fine. <laughs> You're going to do it. <laughs> and talk about like filming on location. I believe that's called the Palm Springs weekend, but I believe it was in desert sands, California at the Marriott desert sands hotel. It, and yeah, it's, it's Palm desert. Yeah. It was, which is basically next door to Palm Springs, but, uh, but the hotel is just spectacular. Um, you know, golf courses and pools where well, you see it at all and, and yeah. little boats that come into the lobby and all that. And, and I, I went out with my wife and, and then my youngest son, who was maybe, well, both sons, because there's about a five year difference. One was nine and the other was around four. And they loved the whole business of riding on those boats. And, but they lasted about three days. And my wife, uh, who, who was also an actress, uh, stayed about three days, but she was stuck in the hotel with two boys while I was off <laughs> shooting every day. <laughs> so after three days, she said, oh, "I'm going to go back to Topanga." <laughs> well, yeah, but, it, but it, the place was like with the we had you know, a big enormous workout room and hot tubs and pools. And it, it, after she left with the boys, I had more fun at night. <laughs> Well, you were out uh, while you were shooting. You're out gallivanting with a, a younger fiance, played by Barbara Brighton as Leslie. That's kind right, of the, the right. uh, subject of the show. Is uh, you're getting married and Jesse is not for it because your your uh, your fiance is so young. Because just got to talk about about that, like your your uh, so, you know your interactions with Elizabeth Berkeley and some and some of the cast members. Obviously, they were kids at the time, and and um, you know they were. Uh, you know, still 16, 17, eight, you know, years old. Um, so they didn't have maybe the, the, a full day of shooting, like, like, uh, some of the, um, you know, old, older cast did Just talk about your interactions with Elizabeth Berkeley and some of the other cast members, uh, whether it be, um, Mark Paul Gosselar or, um, you know, Mario Lopez, any of the, any of the others. 
Well, I, I, I worked out with Mario and, and Mark Paul and, and hung out with them a bit at, at night and then when, when my wife came back to, to L.A. Uh, and they were great young kids, very, very smart, very talented, both of them. That Mario's done okay. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, with Elizabeth, it was very interesting because the whole thing about the show was uh, uh, I was marrying this young woman who worked at the hotel, who taught, who was a, a the exercise teacher at the hotel, who was considerably my junior, and and. Uh, uh, Elizabeth was dating. Elizabeth, I think, was eighteen or nineteen at that time. I'm not. I'm not sure. I hope I'm not dating her. And everybody goes, Uh-oh. <laughs> "Oh my God, she's seventy five years old." Uh, 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 we, I, my, my wife was con- actual wife was considerably. She was like maybe nine years younger and, and mm. but elizabeth was dating this older man who was a producer uh, of uh, television shows I, I i don't i'm not exactly sure i remember exactly what the name of the show was and i don't want to I, I, i'd rather not throw his name into the mix because yeah elizabeth's privacy and everything else mm. uh but but she was dating this young man. She, she said, well, you, you're older than your wife, and, and my parents are very concerned that I'm dating this older man. And, I, and she said, because they just think that there's too much time and difference between our ages, and we don't have as much in common, and, and, and all of those things. And I said, Elizabeth, you're, you're, you're talking to the right person, because <laughs> uh, I, had, I, had, I never went through that except in my own head that that she was my my wife is th- that much younger than i but mm-hmm. but it has not made a single bit of difference in how we relate to one another we yeah. we d- care deeply about one another and then and then there you go and she said oh i'm so glad to hear that i'm going to tell my mom and dad I'm, I'm like, well, you know, maybe i shouldn't have said anything at all but it was exactly <laughs> the story of, of of the piece that we were working on yeah, absolutely. And uh, George, we've got a scene here to do. This is uh, between uh, <laughs> yourself and Elizabeth Berkeley. Uh, Jesse's not wanting Thanks me to get married. Thanks for sending it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for sending it. It was. It was. It was. It's interesting to see. I'm. I'm. That was what twenty some odd years ago. It's only been twenty eight years, George. Only twenty eight. There you go. Let's count the number. There. Only twenty eight. <laughs> That must have been my age at the time. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's let I, I interrupted you again, and and uh, there you go. But oh, you're good, what yeah. were you about to say? Yeah, we got this scene to do. I'll start us off. And of course, uh, we don't. It, there's two male hosts. We're interviewing you, so I'm going to play the role of Jesse to the best of my capabilities. Oh, and yeah. uh, of course, you will play yourself. You don't have to pitch the... your. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Daddy, I want you to call off the wedding. I don't think Leslie's right for you. I'm sorry you feel that way, but I love her and she loves me. But there's so many other women. Jesse, I will always be your father. But you're growing up and you'll have your own life. I want my own life too. I'm marrying Leslie and that's final. Then I won't be there to see it. And scene, we got it. Uh, <laughs> George, can't thank you enough. That was great. I, I mean, I think the, the memories of the past. The bigger stretch there Real was no Noah playing the part of Elizabeth Berkeley. That was really good. No, I mean, I'm, I'm impressed, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. not sure how that quite went. Uh, me playing a Come female. Come on, Noah, let's let's get in the hot tub. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jets that, and I'm in. I show. Sometimes I show that scene to to, to friends of mine. I say they say you're on the same by the bell, and everyone reacts that way when I say it. And 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 I say yeah. I, and I then I show them the scene of of me with the two babes in the hot tub, and they go. Oh my God! 
<laughs> and I said, yeah, that's just the way it is in Hollywood. That's the way yeah. that works. <laughs> well, every, every part is that way. You get a role, you just jump in the hot tub with the best looking girls on set. and that's Exactly. That's part. That's one of the writers in my contract. <laughs> well, that's a great contract you have. Give your agent a little extra money for getting that written in. So. George, we would be remiss uh, to, if we didn't ask you about Raunch and Roll. You just completed this. You play uh, the role of Mr. Big. Uh, so we got to get uh, kind of what is Raunch and Roll? When can we expect it out? And uh, where can we see it? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, it, it was done by, uh, hearkening back to the earlier part of our conversation, with the son of the, of the man who used to produce uh, uh, the Barn Theater in Michigan. Uh, yeah. His, and his his wife plays the lead. She's a young she's a young singer, and I'm Mr. Big is the big record producer that she comes to see. And 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 it, it's been now. I think, gosh, I did this thing like a year and a half, maybe two years ago, and and it's been in post production since then. I I keep hearing words like it's about to come out, but who knows yet? Well, we'll definitely that's, be on the lookout for that. Too. Definitely. And a lot of the people that I've worked with for years out there at that theater are in the film. And uh, let's see. I'm just wondering, no, no, Tom's not in it, I don't think. Well, George, we just can't thank you enough for, for doing this with us and for, for reading the line and for going back and taking a trip back into, uh, you know, our uh, little time machine here and talking about, um, you know, a, a show that took place 28 years ago that we're still talking about today. You're very much a part of it, and uh, you you have a whole career here to look back on and be very proud of. So we can't thank you enough for doing it with us, and uh, we'll, we'll have to catch you again soon. And any time you have anything to promote, we'd be glad to help you out, George. Well, that'd be great, Noah. And then uh, very often I'll try to look you up when I come see visit my sister. I'm in Kansas City from time to time. So. Well, well, that'd be great, George. And we can we can all go out to a Missouri game together. We can get your credentialed. If you need help with that, you might not uh, be a, a big name out there. But uh, we'd love to catch a Missouri football game with you sometime. Yeah, let's do it. I was a Missouri pace setter <laughs> in the in the yearbook. <laughs> That's awesome, George. Anyway, thank, thank you again, you. Noah. Thank you both. You bet, George. Thanks that was a lot. A lot of fun. Okay. Bye.